I'm Charlotte. I'm Sam. And together we are Hope with Mental Health. Um, and we thought we'd do a video today talking about the Caroline Flack documentary. Um, when was this on? About a week ago-ish? Um, yeah, and I just felt like it was really important to be covered because actually there's so much in that documentary that's so relevant. Relevant, yeah. It's basically, Caroline Flack was the epitome of the quote, I'm not pretending to be ill, I'm pretending to be well. Um, and that's a quote that we sometimes put up on our social media because it's really sad. And I know this can happen where people can play on the whole depression and anxiety and, you know, eating disorder spin where people, you know, say, oh, I've got depression and maybe they don't fully have it. They just mm. may be in a low mood. You know, where it's that sort of line where now it seems like everyone, a lot of people have something and it's hard to get yeah. the balance because you want to speak about it. You really like, yeah. you want, if Carolyn has spoken about it, maybe she had spoken about it. I haven't seen it. Have you, no. You so it? basically Caroline Flack, if anyone hasn't seen it, she um, took her own life couple of years ago was it or a year ago god I don't know time's gone all weird because of covid but anyway I wasn't aware that she had any mental health issues and I think the documentary is the first time that it's actually been documented that she had she'd asked her parents and her sister to never let anyone know the struggles that she went through so they weren't allowed to talk about it and her mum said in the documentary that she had spoken with Caroline and said, look, you know, everyone's talking about it now. Um, you know, may, maybe be open or, or something along those lines. I can't remember what she said, but basically she had mentioned to Caroline, you know, it seems to be a much more accepted thing. And Caroline was basically adamant that she didn't want anyone to know the struggles that mm. she was going through. And she, it's really sad. Her sister had said that they were basically waiting for the day that she took her life because mm. she had attempted to in the past. Mm. And it was all always through most of the time because of rocky relationships where a relationship went sour and she just basically couldn't cope with life um but you'd never see that she looked so like happy and jolly and but I guess that's the mask isn't it and she always enjoyed presenting on tv so I guess she was doing what she enjoyed and then as soon as she lo lost her host role on Love Island uh, I think she just couldn't see they said she just couldn't see a way out or she always could see something, whether that was a job that she had coming up or mm. something, but because that had been taken away, I think mm. she just couldn't see out. So I saw an interview with Ollie Murs actually, and he oh, was saying yeah. when they first, Dermot O'Leal, Leal, O'Leary, O'Leary was the host for X Factor. This and is then, in the documentary. Yeah, then when him and Caroline went into it, they got so much hate. The thing is, they got when, so much abuse. When you're in a job like that, and you are in the public eye, you have to, it's a no-brainer. If you want the perks of fame, you have to take the bad with it. Mm. And you will get criticism, 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 and you have to have a thick skin, and you have to take it. But I think there's a fine line between criticism, criticism and just people being, oh, honestly, like, poison. Like, people they, just being... Yeah mean and cruel there's constructive criticism and then there's just people being really really mm. cruel and that's where i think people say like what's that quote it's like people say what they want now as mean as it is it's a lot better, better quote than this what i'm saying but because they won't get punched in the face because mm. you're behind a screen because you're a keyboard warrior yeah back then if you said something like that you would probably get the repercussions now Mm. That's what I imagine they look like. Yeah. Um, mean, cool people. Like I, I go on Instagram or social media every day, and I I see I'm not even looking for it, mm. and I see a comment that's like I'm like, Oof, bit harsh. Um, and again, you're gonna get good and bad people in the world, but then there's just the people that are just plain. And for some reason, and they said this in the documentary, Caroline seemed to get so much more abuse than than even Ollie, like Ollie Mer said. Mm. He was obviously trolled, but she was like trolled a crazy amount. And it's so sad, but she also was addicted to looking at 
all the tweets on her phone mm. um, and that's what um, I think was it her agent or a friend said that you know they tried to just say to Caroline look don't have a phone like don't look at it but she was addicted at, almost addicted to looking at what people were saying about her um, but it's just really sad I think it's just the epitome of of that quote that we said at the mm. beginning you know and, and none of us knew what she was struggling with and honestly I think people trolling people like that should be should be actually a criminal offence I just I don't understand yeah and the media I mean the media had a massive role to play yeah. in Caroline's death I, I think from watching the documentary I mean obviously I can't yeah I mean I've never we've never been in public eye like that but I do think if it was just, I don't know, tell me if I'm talking out of turn, if it was just the media, that would be dealable, How that would be mm. handled, you could handle that. Whereas because you've got the whole added extra social media, you, could, you put away your newspaper, you put away the TV, but you always have your phone on you. Mm. And it's just, it's almost nat so natural now to look at social media, it's always there. So I think having that added social media 24-7, um, yeah, but I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't get where these people come from. Jack something, he's a, he was a singer of X Factor, he has a little baby, his baby's really wrinkly. But you know babies are like that, babies are just a bit, sometimes they can be a bit wrinkly. Uh, but it's cute, really cute. He had to put up a post because people were trolling the baby. Yeah, I think, unfortunately that is just social media. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just going back to that same old quote, like, you never know what people are going through, so just be kind. Like, don't, yeah. you know, if you don't have something nice to say, just don't say it. But just keep it to yourself. Yeah, and even, you know, if, even if you do want to criticise someone, do it constructively. Even when I was doing the, the performing... I don't think it's really people's... People don't know what they're... They just yeah. say things, you know, and it's like... You can't, you can't just say things and not have repercussions, especially when you don't know what someone is going through. Like the yeah. people we see on TV, they actually have personal lives. They're not just sort of like a facade. Well, no, that sort of is what they are. They're a facade. But they then have mm. personal lives. Mm. I don't know if I said mm. that right. But, mm. but for yeah. people as well to be trolling a baby, like mm. that's how deep it goes. And it's just a baby. It's going to grow and podge out a bit. Leave it alone. Yeah. Anyway, if, if anyone gets a chance to watch the Caroline Flack documentary and, you know, probably don't if you might find it triggering in some yeah. way, but... Although I'm sure a lot of people have already. Yeah. yeah. Like, have a watch of it and it kind of opens your eyes to how horrible human beings can be um, and kind of how sad it was, really. Yeah. And, yeah, we just hope that her family are getting support, I guess. And, yeah. So yeah, we thought we'd cover that and we'd love to know your thoughts if you have watched the documentary. Let us know below. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.